Huh. Okay, we've got a cow being toxic on Twitter. No, that's just a couple of rats. Where the heck did they hide that bowl of ramen? Oh, there it is. Hey guys, Ramen King here. Today we're going to be reviewing Hidden in My Paradise, a very adorable and addicting hidden object game by developer Ogre Pixel, with a big thanks to Stride PR for granting me a key and allowing me to review this game. Hidden in My Paradise features 25 very enjoyable levels, with different sets of levels having different sceneries, like a forest, the beach, or an animal city. As with any hidden object game, the goal is to attempt to search for different listed objects among numerous other random objects scattered about the level. Finding objects are usually pretty easy, but there are some stumpers that will have you scratching your head a bit for a few minutes. If you do get lost for too long, you can ask the game to help you by clicking on the item that you're looking for. You also have two additional objectives such as finding any sparkling objects to reveal fairies, and moving objects around as shown in the example picture and recreating it for a snapshot. I really like these extra objectives because you're not just done with a level when you've found everything, and it adds to what you've already found and allows you to have fun with them. Uh, someone should probably get that pig away from that bacon. The snaps were kind of touchy sometimes because it felt like there were some instances where items didn't need to be placed exactly like they were in the picture, but other times the item needed to be flipped to successfully recreate it. The player engagement doesn't end there, as each animal you touch reacts really cutely and gives you coins which can be used in the shop. The shop contains sets of items that you see in the regular levels to help create custom levels as well as tickets for the gacha machine. While most of the items can be bought with coins, the rest of the items are obtained through the gacha machines, which will give you random items per ticket used. Don't worry though, you can't get duplicates and the items will always be new. The sandbox feature is very easy to understand, especially after playing through the main game as moving things around and putting things on the map acts the same, just with a few extra steps. Everything is well categorized, and you can put whatever items you've seen from the main game if you've obtained them from the shop. You can also assign what items can contain fairies and create your own snaps. Not only that, but you can even upload your levels for others to find. You can even find the level I made in this video by searching for its name. At least you would, but right now the search box is messed up on PCs, so you can't type anything in. But I'm sure they'll fix that eventually. The art in this game is like a moving coloring book, and everything is designed to be really cute. Each level has its own theme within the map, like little animal weddings, parties, camping, and farm living. I must have repeated the words, oh that's adorable, at least like 50 times, and I'm pretty sure you will too. There's only one song that's played throughout the levels. I didn't mind it, but some people might find it repetitive. There is an option to turn down the volume, so if you feel like listening to something else or just want silence, you're completely free to do so. Overall, I put about 4 hours in with main game completion and getting all the gacha items, and I enjoyed every second of it. I've never played an object finding video game before, and if all of them were like hidden in my paradise, I'd be more inclined to play more of them. This game is already out and currently available on Steam and Nintendo Switch, and I highly suggest checking this game out. As always guys, if you enjoyed the review, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you all in the next review video.